In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the modifier stack. So the modifier stack is over here in 3ds Max. If we go ahead and create a box, for example, um, and then go to our modifier tab, this is our modifier stack. So the way Max works is you create an object and then you add modifiers to it to adjust it into the form you want it to be, or if you want to add a texture map, there's different tools for that. And most of those occur within the modifier list here. And then as you add them, you stack these modifiers one on top of the other. So for example, if you open up this modifier list, these are all the different modifiers you can use. You can see that some of them are um, categorized in different ways. These are world space modifiers. There's object space modifiers. These are the ones that will really transform objects. So for example, bending objects or twisting objects all exist within the stack here. Um, if you go further down, there's other modifiers like UVW map. These are modifiers only for texture mapping. So sometimes if you add a modifier, you might not see an actual effect on the geometry until you do other things. So if I add a UVW map modifier, that's for texture mapping. So if I don't have a texture or material that I've applied to the object, it won't actually show up or do anything. So not all of these will have an immediate effect, but a lot of the deformer ones, you can sort of tell what they are based on the name like you can taper an object, add symmetry to an object. Let's just do a basic one here and we'll use the bend modifier. And you can see once you add a bend modifier, it adds it above the original geometry. So it continues to stack these things as you add them. Each modifier, just like the box, has a series of parameters. Each modifier has parameters. And depending on what's highlighted in the stack, those are the parameters that will show up. So if I go to bend, I can change the angle of the bend here. Um, I could change the axis of the bend, and then I can go in and add another modifier. So in this case, let's add a twist modifier. The twist, like the bend, has a series of parameters. Of course, they're different because they relate to the twisting of a geometry. So in this case, the angle of the twist. Um, you can even bias the twist toward one end or the other and change the twist axis. And then you can go in and continue to add modifiers. I could add another bend if I wanted to. Maybe I'll do this on the uh, Y axis. And that will bend it that way. Maybe the X axis. Yeah. Um, and you can then begin to stack these modifiers. Now, one nice thing about the modifier stack is that you can turn on and off modifiers. So if you're not quite sure about the twist, instead of selecting it, right-clicking, and deleting it, you can actually just turn it off so it won't affect the geometry. And that's just a nice way to really test, you know, is that really what I want to do to this geometry? Um, and then you can decide to keep it or delete it. Uh, another thing you can do is it's all parametric. So I can go back and change the box. And you can see it updates everything that happened um, in the stack that's after the box. So if I change this, it'll go in, it'll, it'll still um, be bending whatever you've changed the box to be and continue to twist it. So it works sort of in a sequence going from bottom to top. Now another thing you could do is actually change that sequence. So if I want this bend to occur before the twist, I can hold my left mouse button down and drag it below the twist and then it will uh, perform those operations in the different order. So now it's going to bend the object, bend it again, and then twist the object. So there's quite a bit of flexibility. All of it's parametric, and you can always change things on the fly. Um, one thing you could do, let's say I have another box over here, or actually let's just use another geometry altogether, like a plane. You can actually select this geometry um, and select these modifiers. Let's say I select one. Um, you can right-click on that modifier, and you can copy it. And then I can select my plane, and I can right-click on the plane and paste either the copy of that modifier or an instance. If I paste an instance of it, then it will keep the link between those two geometries. So if I paste instanced, now if I change the twist parameters, it's going to change them to both geometry. Let's go ahead and twist that in the x-axis so we can see it. So that's instance. If I right click, just like I do with cloning, I can make that unique so it's only affecting that geometry. So that's a really nice way to you know copy modifiers from one object to a entirely different object type if you want to. Um, a few other things you can do, you can right click and you collapse them so it kind of gets rid of everything and makes it uh, into the final geometry. It basically bakes in all of those modifiers to the, the box geometry. And then finally the other thing is this really useful show end result toggle. So what this allows me to do, if I delete this plane here, is toggle on and off what I see here. So if I go to this bend and I have that off, it's only going to show me the box and then the bend. If I turn this on, it's going to show me everything that happens to it. So if I want to see how this particular bend affects the, 
the final geometry, I can keep that highlighted. But if I want to see how that bend only affects the box and what's below it, I can deselect that. So that's kind of a really nice tool that I, I use frequently to toggle between just to see what the, the um, modifier is doing to the geometry. So here again, if I turn that on, it's going to show the twist above it. If I turn it off, it'll only show this bend, this bend, and that box. So that's the modifier stack, really handy and a lot that you can do with it.